Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and with me today at the Omega headquarters in Biel is Gregory Kisling, Head of Product Management. Thank you, Alexander, for visiting us today in, in Biel. It's, it's a big pleasure for me to present you our Novelties 2021, and for once, not with Zoom or Team or Skype, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. in We're real person. I'm not an hologram. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm so happy to be here too. Um, if you have not been following what we have been doing recently, please go uh, and watch all the other videos we have been taping and uh, uh, buy our little trip here in Switzerland. But today we are in Biel in the center of Switzerland, the headquarters of Omega and everything is live. I'm live, he's live. And first video will be about the... Uh, we will present you uh, the brand new Seamaster 300 uh, with a brand new master chronometer upgrade. Uh, it's a very nice combination between uh, uh, the spirit of the first generation of uh, 1957, but also uh, with new technologies and new materials. Worth seeing it and uh, you have heard the voices now, Gregory's voice, my voice. Uh, what you will not see again uh, is us because we are really going to film the watches in macro, so you will see every detail. Uh, and that's the best way. He will, will make uh, a co-moderation together with me. We will present you all details, but you will see the watches as big as possible on the screen. Enjoy this video. It will be amazing. Subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Fasten your seatbelt for something new. We offer you the chance to win a priceless experience. New subscribers with an activated notification can win a watch manufacturer trip to Switzerland. Together with our partner from Tobel, we give away 10 all-inclusive trips worth a total of 50,000 Swiss francs. More details on watchadvisor.com. Furthermore, register there to double your chances to win. See you soon in Switzerland. So the Omega logo is in your picture and guess what? 48 millimeters is the luck distance, luck to luck distance of this watch and ta ta ta, -ta here it is. This is the new Seamaster 300 and uh, Greg is with me and he will guide you through the watch or tell you everything about it. Look at it. You enjoy the pictures and you just listen what we have to tell you. Greg, it's yeah, uh, you are presenting the, the brand new Seamaster 300. This is uh, the latest generation and uh, we, we, we definitely wanted to, to be inspired by the first Seamaster 300 generation which came out in 1957, a fantastic year with the trilogy. Uh, Speedmaster and Wheelmaster was where uh, with, uh, with the Seamaster 300. So we, we wanted to, to bring back some key design elements from, from the past such as the, the dome crystal uh, glass. Was, let me show it. Yeah, the, the, the idea yeah. was to, to introduce a, a true vintage look to the piece, but also to reduce uh, the, the visual thickness of the watch. So the case band uh, looks much thinner than the previous generation, but also uh, we, we, we decided with, with, the new, uh, with the new generation, we decided to enlarge the, the dial opening. Uh, both generations, they, they share the same diameter uh, of, of the case, which is 41 millimeters. But the new generation looks much bigger, uh, despite the fact that it has exactly the same diameter. But we, what we did, we enlarged the, the dial opening by reducing the case body inner ring. One can clearly see this, yeah. no doubt. We also introduce a, a sandwich dial. Basically, a sandwich dial is, is composed by two elements. We have a base plate in German silver here. We machined actually the, the, the cavities for the, the, the hour markers and uh, the auric the numbers. And then we have a second plate uh, with all the cuttings mm -hmm. of the hour markers, the auric numbers in, in open style. What is sandwich? The nomen, nomen est omen. You have two dials being put together. And now when I, you know, see the angle here, and if you see here that this is really a three-dimensional effect given, mm. do I say this correctly? Yeah, you, you 
you definitely see the recessed uh, indexes and, and uh, Arabic numbers. Yes. So sandwich dial. Yeah. This is how it looks like when it is <laughs> in a dial. Okay, we had the blue one, this is the black one, yeah. but still it is the same dial and you see this effect yeah. that is now given here. Uh, this collection is, uh, is, is, is a brand new master chronometer upgrade, but you don't see any references to the movement uh, on the dial, so the, we decided to keep a, a clean dial. So we have only the, the Omega logo and the Seamaster 300 at 6 o'clock, so all the references to the movement have been moved to the, to the case back. Clearly visible. You can see the two barrels uh, which are mounted in series, so awesome. barrel 1 and barrel 2. And you see the beauty of uh, the Genoa waves in, in Arabesque, which is and definitely a, turn it around so you can a nice see signature the of our manufacturing movement. That's three and a half hertz, I suppose. Correct. 25,000 25, semi oscillation per hour, typical frequency for, that mo for this movement. No date, but the watch features uh, the uh, time zone or zone time feature. Yeah, time zone function, which is very useful when, you, when you're traveling. Uh, so you don't stop uh, the, the seconds when you, you turn the, your, your time zone. You just have to screw yeah. out the, the crown. Of course. And then you are able to set to the pull in, in first position. And, and look, and already the fact that I can do this with gloves is a very good... This means that everything has been done right. Because if you, don't, if you can't open up a crown with... with there you go. You see? Yeah. You can see that we also uh, redesigned the, the shape of, of the crown, which has now a conical shape. Mm -hmm. And when you pull out in a second position, there it is, and you now you can set the clock and I will make it smile again. There is happy Omega. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, second position time setting, first position is independent setting of the hour hand. And, of course, you see the lollipop starts yeah. again. Uh, lollipop is actually inspired by... Uh, and uh, important, excuse me, Greg. Not, I, I wanted to say, say this because you were, you were talking about it. The important is this is a certified, master certified chronometer, precise to zero plus five. Five seconds a day okay. in, in sixth position and two different temperatures. So imagine if you are setting time when you travel and you pull out uh, the watch at the crown in the first, possession, uh, first position, do you see? You don't stop the seconds. You don't stop the seconds. Yeah. You don't lose precision because this chronometer will be precise. And you just reset whenever you're traveling uh, back or forward to, to local time and you're all done and you yeah. close again and you don't, leave, don't lose the pre uh, precise uh, timekeeping of the watch. I'll close it again. Very nice. Time done. zone function. Time zone function. Here are from this side. And you can also admire the, the new design signature for, for the screen case back uh, with, the, with this alveol. All the brand new Seamaster, which are now master chronometer, they, they feature this type of uh, design for, for the screen case back. Looks like a temple. <laughs> so look at this detail. What is this? I just discovered something I've never seen before on the on Omega watch, Greg, yeah. can you just... Oh. Yeah, this is definitely a new conception for the integration of our uh, metal bracelet. Uh, uh, we decided to remove the, the, the two lug stoppers uh, and that's why we engraved this uh, cavity um, on, the, on the case band, of, of the case body. And, uh, and therefore, we don't need any more the, the two lug stoppers. So the, the oh, integration okay. of the metal bracelet is... is, is we will show that. You see, you have the same here. It's much nicer. This is the old model I have in my hand? Yeah, the, the previous generation, exactly. And yeah. uh, you, you see the two lug stoppers for the end piece. Yeah. And now we show and the new one. So here you have the new one, and you don't see any more of the two lug stoppers. Little detail, and this is, you have to discover these details. and. It's now flat, integrated, fully yeah. integrated mm -hmm. in between the lugs. It doesn't Look. scratch the, the, the bottom of the lugs, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and, absolutely uh, visible and, and clearly, but you have to discover, it's a detail. Yeah. We also changed the, the geometry of the end piece. Um, uh, the new generation has now a U-shaped end piece, which means that uh, mm -hmm. it fits perfectly uh, on, a, on a tiny wrist uh, instead of a T-shaped end piece. If you compare with the previous generation, you will see the difference. That's absolutely not comparable. And on the wrist, is, uh, the difference is, is, uh, yeah. is even even bigger.
ergonomical, optical and details and uh, yeah, these little improvements under the hood normally you don't see because yeah, if you're not, if you're not showing them and if you are not told, uh, you can see not for sale, Omega headquarter, <laughs> you see here. People love this not for sale watch. They always when I show them ask me, can I buy a not for sale? No, it's written not for sale. <laughs> And this is the, the blue version. Uh, you can also definitely see that uh, we introduced the, the lollipop for the central seconds hand, which is actually inspired by uh, a Seamaster 300 of uh, 1959. And you can nicely see, look, Greg, you can nicely see the sandwich dial. I think this is something you have to discover really by getting close, very close, and then you, it's, it's looking three-dimensional, gives a total different uh, appearance to the watch. Oh, I love it. Okay, and this, uh, Greg, now is the original watch from 1959. 59. Yeah, also with a lollipop central second hand. And you can also admire the, the tritium uh, yes. with this vintage look. Of course. You, have see, you see that the, the, everything that's written on the dial Omega Automatic Seamaster 300 is like with the new one. I uh, will show the piece also from the side, so you yeah, can see, you can see the domed. The domed, and every, yeah, you see really how much you worked on, on all the details. Let me show it from the back. Plain case back with a Seals logo. Nice. It's good to have the original. And also from this side, so you can see how it looked like. And uh, at that time, they, they introduced a, a very interesting uh, concept, design concept for the, for the turning bezel. So to turn the, the bezel in both directions, you had to press first and then to turn. Yeah, yeah. true. Uh, in both directions. Yeah, yeah, true, you have to. So we introduced a kind of a security system I, I get for, it. for the first nice. divers, uh, okay. divers oh, watch. I love this angle. For look. professionals. Very nice. So um, let's talk about the bezel now. Uh, instead of using ceramic, uh, as we usually do for a diver's watch, uh, we decided to use uh, aluminium, but with a special treatment, which is named uh, oxalic anodized treatment in order to increase the, the hardness, uh, which is uh, 500 vicus, um, which is twice as hard as the standard treatment. And uh, the 60 mm diving scale is, is first engraved uh, with a laser and then filled with uh, vintage Superluminova. The, the idea was to, to have a, a dark uh, and matte finish in order to match perfectly with, with the dial. That's why we decided to go with uh, the uh, aluminium instead of, uh, of ceramic. Anyhow, the scratch resistant uh, as it is, uh, has been treated uh, with 500 Vickers is... Uh, <laughs> You, you really you really need to uh, I, I think you really need to be rude very rude to your watch to scratch it and the question is always people when they when you have aluminium bezels people always say okay why didn't they put an, an a ceramic bezel honestly uh, if, if you ask me they would have didn't wouldn't have looked good anyway color wise of... and this is a, a watch that really refers to the vintage pieces and I don't see any any reason to put an, an, an a ceramic basil here. At the end, it was definitely a question of, of design. Of course. Yeah. And not a question of not being able to do it. You can do it, of course. It looks better. I'm, the more I see aluminium coming back, it's really fantastic. Look, and, look uh, at that. And due to the fact that the crystal is domed, uh, uh, yeah. it protects also the bezel, such as a Speedmaster, you know, with, yeah. a, with a box shape, it protects yeah. actually the, the surface of the bezel. If you really scratch this basil, the watch has some damage, not only on the basil, I think. That's, that's my, my, well, yeah, <laughs> my understanding. Once again, you see the movement. Also this one, I will also show you the strap, as we always do, so you can quickly see this go through. The watches all have a 
pin buckle with the Omega logo on, you see. And yeah, depending on your taste, this is brown, more the Italian style. Absolutely. Yeah. Brown, blue, uh, taking a little bit of the color of the uh, Super Luminova used. But I think there's one way you could wear the watch. Only one possibility. And we also introduced only one anti-reflective treatment uh, underneath uh, the sapphire, also in order to, to give this uh, true vintage look. Because um, if you yeah. have an um, anti-reflective on, on both sides, you, you lose this, um, this distortion. <clears throat> we do have some reflections, of course, um, when we film. But I think this is also part of uh, wearing such a watch that uh, goes back in its look and design uh, to a historic watch coming from the 50s. And uh, why not having some reflections? There is anti-reflective treatment, as Greg said, under the sapphire crystal, but not on it. Nice look. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the metal bracelet. We also decided to change the, the shape of, of the metal bracelet. Uh, first, between the legs, 20 millimeters, and for the clasp is 16. Okay, uh, so it tapers from 20, one, 21. To 16. To 16. Yeah. yeah. We Something people always want to know. 16 and... 21. 21. So this is... Oh. We also change uh, the finishes, which means that now the central links are satin brushed and the external links are polished in order to match with the, the polished finish of the straight legs. And, um, and that's why this, uh, this type of finishing um, was inspired by the first generation. Uh, if you turn the watch, you can also see that we introduced the flat links for this bracelet. Length adjustments, you unscrew, you take out one of the links and then you can adjust the length. And then let's go the, the class to the class. has three positions. Omega, logo, yes. Matte surface, polished, very nice. And on the inner side, you have yeah. Yeah. You have the rack and pusher. Yeah. Um, Here it is. So for the comfort adjustment, you, you actually have three positions. How many millimeters you can? Um, over uh, roughly six, six millimeters. Okay. So, so length so. adjustment, micro length adjustment is there. I will also close it. I will show it. Wait, let me close the. So you can, I will do a completely 360 turn from the watch, showing you. Um, you prefer this side? Uh, okay, then we'll do this side. So I will really turn the watch. Once again, 21, tapering down to 16. 16. You have the nice Omega logo. Continuing my little 360 turn and we come back this side. Here you go. And from the side, once again, we have 48 millimeters lug to lug distance, nothing changes of course. And as uh, Greg already explained before, the new integration of the bracelet in, in between the lugs makes that difference, looks different, is different. I will open. We, we also improved actually the, the integration. I mean the, the gap between the, the end piece and, and the watch head. Yeah. It's not only a question of aesthetic, it's also a question of uh, ergonomic. Er ergonomics, you said that, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Case back, see through case back, same movement, of course. And I will now push, and you can see how it expands. Let me show you. See, it's now fully expanded. I've been pushing on the button, and now and I will push back in. And you see, well, this is what you have. Let me show it again slowly. Ca camera is on it, so you can really see. I push. There you go. Three positions, as Greg said, I had three clicks. Haptical response coming also from um, the clasp. Very nice. And this is the length adjustment you have. Once again, to show the little pusher I'm using, here it is. Here, oh, now with the reflections, there we go, look. Voila. And uh, double security, of course, uh, to open. You have the two push pieces to open up. See, that's the folding clasp. 
nicely done, solid construction. Job. Voila. Once again, my favorite blue. My favorite color blue. The dial. So nice. I love this sandwich construction. And people have been discussing a lot about the lollipop. Uh, is the lollipop nice? Is it not nice? Uh, what about uh, you? Are you um, do you like uh, this kind of um, central second hand? Uh, use the comment function and let me know if you like it or not. What do you say personally? I'm filming it once again, swiping over the dial um, so we can clearly follow it. Make up your mind and I, I think you have to see and watch it a little bit. I'm taking some extra time here, excuse me, Greg, <laughs> for, uh, um, but I, they, I heard when I showed the first pictures about the lollipop, uh, people saying, oh, watch it and tell me if you like it. This is how you would see it, uh, having the watch on the wrist. I'm really showing it under different angles from the, and then if I turn it, you can see, I think it looks nice. Okay, next one. Are you interested in the Swiss watch industry? Check out Fontobel's latest Swiss watch industry outlook on fontobel.com slash watches. And now, woo, the piece everybody probably watching this video was waiting for, the new bronze and gold. Correct, Correct. Correct. bronze gold. Yeah, this is definitely the, the flagship of, uh, of the brand new Seamaster 300 uh, collection. And for those, we don't like the lollipop. You can see that uh, we introduced uh, the broad arrow style for the central second hand. But um, the main topic of this of this timepiece is, is definitely the the alloy, uh, which is patent pending. Um, we decided to to develop and to produce uh, a bronze uh, a bronze gold alloy that could be worn with direct contact on the skin. Um, this alloy was developed to give a, a very pleasing aesthetic and, and, and you. And uh, thanks to its composition, uh, we could obtain a very nice color which uh, sits exactly between uh, the moonshine gold alloy we developed for the 50th anniversary of, uh, of the moon landing and the, the Sedna gold alloy we, we have in our collection. Um. Will uh, this bronze change uh, over the time its uh, color? Is it stabilized or is it entitled to, to change the color a little bit? No, the, 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 the alloy will change. I mean, we wanted to develop an alloy uh, without uh, this kind of very degree oxidation, but at the same time, an alloy which will develop a very nice patina over time. And uh, thanks to the composition of the, the bronze gold alloy, we were able to, to produce, again, an alloy that could be worn uh, with direct contact on the skin. Uh, that's why there is no stainless steel or titanium case back. Uh, the, the, the entire watch head uh, is made, the entire case is made with the, the, brown, or the bronze gold alloy. Um, the, this, this alloy doesn't need any protections. Uh, at all, uh, but the color will change over the time, depending of what you do with uh, with your watch. If you swing every day, or you you put your watch on, you know, in a safe, uh, again, it's depend of the of the conditions. Um, maybe it's important to to talk about the composition of uh, of this alloy. It's a bronze alloy, which means that we we need uh, a minimum of. Uh, 50% of, of copper. Um, I have here a, a, a little camembert. <laughs> Let me show you. Which explain you the, the great composition of, uh, of the bronze alloy. So you have 50% of, of copper. So this um, is this is this copper. Copper. And then uh, the second main element is is gold. Uh, we do have 37.5% uh, of gold, uh, which means that we could 
hallmarked the, the alloy with 9K. So it's a 9K alloy, but again, the goal was not to develop a kind of low cost 18K, but the goal was definitely to develop a bronze alloy, uh, which could be worn with uh, direct contact on the there scale. Some more missing? Uh, yes, another, we, another we, we have the, the silver element. Um, yeah. Silver is, is used. Uh, so coming back with the gold, uh, we use gold for, for the corrosion resistance. Uh, and again, um, this bronze gold alloy is, is has, has fantastic physical properties, uh, does not develop this very degree oxidation, as you can see with uh, some standard bronze, bronze watches. Uh, then we used uh, silver. Silver is used for, for the color of the, of the alloy, uh, but also for the effect of, of the patina. Then we have gallium. Uh, gallium is actually used to facilitate uh, the manufacturing process. And finally, we have palladium. Yeah. Palladium is used much like gold for the corrosion resistance, but also for the color of the alloy. This element reduces also the gap between the color of the patina and the color of, of the alloy. This alloy is composed by uh, five elements, copper, gold, silver, gallium, and palladium. Very nice. Couldn't be better shown with that's the watch back again. So if you got annoyed a little bit watching <laughs> all the alloys, this is how it looks. And uh, Greg, you didn't tell me uh, which is uh, the when it will change or when it will change its surface color. To which direction is it going? Yeah. Brown? No, in the in the, in the we, we made some uh, aging test yeah. and uh, it will change into the the pink direction. Pink. Yeah. Pink, that's yeah. like uh, that's copper. Yeah, exactly. Copper. Exactly. Is it, I think copper is changing to some some pink. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So like the old uh, helmets and and all the diving yeah. diving things you have. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let me just show this again. This is this boxed. Yes. And here, uh, in difference, also we have to say there is a ceramic basal. Yeah, we, we decided to, to go with a ceramic because uh, we do have a very nice bronze ceramic which perfectly match with uh, the bronze gold alloy but also the dial which is uh, actually made with a standard bronze made of uh, copper and tin. So it's a standard bronze. We decided to oxidize this standard bronze in order to obtain this very nice dark brown color. Uh, which perfectly match with the ceramic basil and uh, the bronze gold alloys. So uh, thanks to a special uh, aging process, uh, we, we, we could obtain uh, this dark brown color. I'm, I'm, ah, now I'm here. Oh, this is where I wanted to go. And I was looking for the angle. I didn't want to interrupt you. I was looking for the angle to really show that brown. As we said before, no anti-reflective treatment on the outside. This is why you have these reflections. If you would have them, then the nice uh, box glass wouldn't be as beautiful. But okay, and now if I'm really getting the angle, and there it is. And you see the brown now, uh, how it is. That's a, a deep chocolate. Can I, do you, can I dare to call it chocolate brown? <laughs> Dark brown. I mean Dark uh, <laughs> brown, perfectly matching um, the color of the basil. No. Yep. And uh, I assume the clasp is uh, made also also out of the same alloy. Mm, absolutely. So, and it must be hallmarked. Yeah. Let me show also the hallmark. Voila. Nice. Very nice. Also the, the play. I want to. I, I can't stop playing with the watch in the in the in front of the camera. It's so beautiful. All these. Let me give you one more entire nice. And You can also see that uh, we have both uh, finishing, so polish and uh, satin brush finish. And uh, yeah. it's very good. You see here the difference? Yeah, it's very the difficult. edges, polished, matte, it's polished. Uh, very difficult to, to polish bronze, uh, common bronze alloy. But thanks to this, uh, its yeah. composition, the bronze gold alloy uh, is, is a perfect alloy for having a Polished finish. You see here the angle, polished and matte again. There you go. The star of the collection. Beautiful.
So here, this is uh, the, the dial of uh, the bronze gold edition. So this is the base plate, uh, uh, which is uh, engraved for filling all the cavities with the vintage uh, Super Luminova. And then you have the cover plate, which is uh, produced in, in a standard bronze alloy, which is composed by only copper and tin. So it's 92% uh, of copper and 8% of tin. And after a special aging process, we oxidize uh, the, the bronze alloy. Oh. So it's uh, yeah, almost... It almo get some reflections, otherwise you won't see anything. It's black. It's black. And yeah. then uh, with, a, with a patina process, we remove the, the black in order to obtain this dark brown color really get to the yeah. so it finish it, dial. It, Here comes the yeah. finish dial as we see it in our watch. So it means that each dial is unique because uh, we have this, uh, this patina process for every dial. Then of course it is combined with the Superluminova and you have the sandwich effect. So you made the assembly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I made, I assembled it, yes. <laughs> yes. Look, you can so nicely see the sandwich effect here. You see this? Beautiful. And of course, uh, in order to stop the oxidation, we, we put a protective layer uh, yeah. named Zappel in, uh, in the industry. Well, I, with the gloves, I'm, I'm sorry, you, sorry, um, guys, I'm covering with my gloves, but this is... Uh, okay, here you go. Now I've been... You see it dial? Nice. The stainless steel collection is composed by four references, um, two dials, black and blue, and uh, two different types of bracelet, the metal bracelet and uh, the leather straps, plus the flagship of the collection, the, the bronze gold model. So this, we didn't show this one, that's the black dial uh, with the bracelet. And just to show it, this is the black dial sandwich construction again and combined with the new bracelet polished inner links ah, sorry uh, matte inner links brushed inner links and polished links on the outside so just to show you this one and uh, all these watches even if it's not written on the dial are and now please uh, there comes a color shock for you be aware I will immediately swipe out and make a color shock for you all the watches are master chronometer certified uh, by, and you get this card coming with the watch along that is the proof that the watch has passed all the tests independently controlled here at the Omega headquarter by METAS, the Swiss Institute of Metrology. The watches go through the entire testing procedure accurate to zero plus five seconds. The entire watch, assembled watch is tested and magnet uh, fields up to 15,000 Gauss do try to influence uh, the accuracy but aren't able. If they would be able, no card would be issued. And there's also a nice thing. Um, the card entitles you, if there is an NFC chip in there, if, you, if your cell phone can read NFC chips, entitles you to get to the certification, to the results of your individual watch. Um, and this is really cool. So you can see how your watch performed. It's not a secret. They uh, provide you the information and you can exactly see. And this is by also by the reference number and the watch number, case number, as it is mentioned here. You can also go online if you want, but the card entitles you also to get these results. So it's, they are uh, um, visible. It's, it's uh, completely um, visible and you get the results if you want them. Master Chronometer certified. I will put the link in the comment section if you want to know what this Master Chronometer certification does. I will uh, link you to the site of Metas and uh, you can download the PDF in English language and you can really see how tough the testing is. And it's not just putting a watch on a, on a, on a Vici 
tester, it's much more than this. So really, okay, I had to say this. <laughs> Greg, very nice. Any final word? Lots of headache, I imagine, for you to bring all this together. It's always difficult, I mean, to, to facelift uh, an icon. And uh, I think we, we did a great job because, uh, again, uh, we, we combined um, the spirit of the first, the first generation of 1957 with uh, new technologies, new materials, and uh, new key design elements inspired by the past as well. Very nice. Thank you very much, Gergivi Kisling. Um, thank you very much for watching this video, um, Omega Seamaster 300, the new 2021 edition. Comments are welcome, questions are welcome. I'll pass them on if I can't answer them to Greg. He will answer them uh, together with me. Thanks for watching the video and stay tuned. There's much more to come from our side. Bye-bye. Hey, have you packed your luggage? If not, do so. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. You will get the chance to win your exclusive trip to Switzerland.